very little has actually changed in oil markets outside of what OPEC has decided to do or Saudi Arabia has decided to do and then Russia and Iraq and others. But the actual underlying cost of extracting a barrel of oil has not changed. And so for some years now we've been tracking the cost to produce a barrel of oil from potentially marginal basins like the US onshore and to try and get a very good understanding of what the cost curve looks like to extract oil. And it's quite clear to us that uh, the marginal, if it's the marginal cost of production, US onshore, that many of those barrels are extracted for well north of 60 US dollars a barrel. And that hasn't changed. Uh, over the last five or, or 10 years, yes, there have been some efficiency gains in, in the extraction of, of oil from, from shale basins. But more recently, those efficiency gains are masked by the depletion of, a, of an inventory of uncompleted wells, which are brought onto production quite cheaply. And that inventory of uncompleted wells is running low now. And so it's, it is impossible to sustain the ecosystem at oil prices near $50 a barrel, even with recent information that's taken place. And, and many of these companies are running on this mother of all hamster wheels, going nowhere, or in fact going backwards and, and, and eating into their capital. Sooner or later, that has to end. And I, I can see a number of ways where it might end. Uh, bankruptcy is one. Um, some massive structural acceleration away from oil towards renewables is another one, where of course these come, that would also come with bankruptcies, but um, and, and the other one is just sensible capital allocation where the supply growth that's been coming from US onshore production areas ceases um, and the supply demand imbalance remedies itself. And under that scenario, you would expect the oil price to go back up to somewhere near the marginal cost of production or the 90th percentile of the production cost. And, and that should see oil prices rise quite a lot from here. Over the years investing in some commodities, we've found that the time to invest in commodities are when the price of those underlying commodities cuts very deeply into the respective cost curves. And, and said differently, it's when a lot of producers of that commodity are loss making. And so if you can have a situation where uh, significant swathes of production are loss making in a commodity which the world needs, uh, then clearly that's unsustainable. And, and if in that scenario you can find a company that operates uh, long life assets that are low on the cost curve and have a balance sheet to ride out a storm, whatever that storm might be, then generally speaking, those companies can be very, very good companies to invest in. And we think there are certain oil companies uh, that, that uh, very much fit that, that category. In fact, and, and if you, it, it, the same has happened in other commodities in years gone by in 2013. There were a number of gold companies that you could invest in when gold prices fell significantly. And um, I think the same thing will happen in the oil space. Uh, and these companies with long reserve lives, low cost producers should stand to benefit greatly. And so it's not trying to predict the macro turning point or, or, or the catalyst for things specifically turning around. It, it's saying this company looks very cheaply priced or inexpensive using metrics that are needed to sustain production for years to come. Yeah, so OilSearch is a tricky company. I think it's got a very good production base from its PNG LNG project. A lot of, it's probably been caught up in a perfect storm. It's uh, had some expansion projects delayed or turned off potentially indefinitely. It's had the coronavirus. There's been a glut of gas. Um, so uh, I, I guess its outlook isn't particularly bright uh, if you use an oil price of anywhere near the current oil prices. But if you use an oil price which is at a level which we think is more sustainable, I think uh, oil searches share price offers a decent value today. Uh, but I think the company has made a few missteps. I think one of, one of which is its investment in Alaska. Uh, because without it, it would have had a far less stretched balance sheet. Uh, and another might be the amount of money that they've spent in Papua New Guinea on some of these expansion projects. And 
in fairness to the company, that's not necessarily their own doing because they're a, a, a non-operator joint venture partner in, in both of those expansion projects. And so uh, they may not have been fully in control of that. But uh, I, I think if Oil Search pulls in its capital spending uh, and, and focuses on its base business, it should be able to ride out this storm uh, quite easily. But unfortunately, it hasn't uh, a it, it doesn't arrive at today's position with a very strong balance sheet where it can take advantage of some of the weakness in the market, and that's disappointing. Notwithstanding all of that, we, we do own oil search shares and, and a reasonable amount of them, and so this big fall that you speak of is certainly something that's impacted our portfolio. I do think it's cheap, again, but uh, I, I think there, there would have been, had things been managed differently, ways which the business could have been set up differently. Um, and I think shareholders would have been better served that way. But it, it is what it is, and I think even at today's price, I think it offers a very attractive, a, a very attractive entry level. So we have actually been adding modestly to our all search position.